Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Central Hampshire Veterans Services television show. Uh, I'm Steve Connor. I'm the director of Central Hampshire Veterans Services. I want to just take a quick moment to remind everybody um, in the towns of Pelham, Amherst, Hadley, Northampton, Williamsburg, Goshen, Cummington, Worthington, Chesterfield, Chester, and Middlefield, and Huntington, our new community. Um, if you are a veteran or if a family member is a veteran and you are wondering what services are out there or what benefits are out there, please feel free to contact our main office. It's at 413-587-1299 or you can reach us through email um, either on the City of Northampton's website, you go to Veteran Services, or you can just do VetAdmin, V-E-T-A-D-M-I-N, at NorthamptonMA.gov. And we will answer your questions to the best of our availability, and we will go to any of those towns and meet with folks um, for an appointment to do a claim with the VA or to do a claim with the state benefits program that we run or anything else you might desire. So uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, that's what we're there for. Um, but we're also part of supporting and putting out the perspective of the veteran in all those communities and across the country. And in that vein, many of the shows I've brought you have been about different things where we either support veterans or showcase um, their activities and what's going on in, in the veteran world. And today's show is no uh, exception. I am being joined today with my guest, John Parody and Molly, uh, I just looked at the light, <laughs> Molly Maxner, um, on a project that we uh, have spent considerable amount of time developing and working on, um, all the way from before the pandemic, talking on the phone while we were at Miss Flo's Diner, while you were in North Carolina, to um, what we are doing currently and what's about to come up. And so we want to share with the public what we have coming starting November 3rd. Um, many of you in the area know John. He's been on my show before, and uh, he was a longtime employee of the VA. He's now retired, so he works harder than he ever has. <laughs> and Molly Maxner, um, I'll just let you know, she is from Northampton originally. Her family lived on Vernon Street. I didn't know you when you lived on Vernon Street, but I lived there at the same time, and I knew your dad, and I knew your younger sisters, because my daughter was big friends with them. With that said, what do we have happening starting November 3rd? So we have a festival called A Stone's Throw, and it's a festival celebrating um, visual art through visual art and performance, the veteran and family experience. And it's going to involve uh, visual art exhibitions in different areas in Northampton, as well as live performances at APE Gallery on Main Street. Before I get into what those events might be, why A Stone's Throw? So when we were thinking along many days of what we would title this. Uh, I was actually talking with my sister um, and thinking about, you know, this, what we've talked about a lot of the ripple effects, you know, that when someone serves in the military, there are ripple effects. Ripple effects for their spouses, for their families, into the community. And so this idea of when a stone gets tossed into, into a pond, that there are those ripples. Also, as I was researching the phrase and looking at its history and etymology, and um, it, there's also this idea that a stone throw is used to communicate a distance. Mm -hmm. And it's a distance that's not very far because it's, you can throw a stone that distance. Right. And yet, that distance is a distance to be traversed. Right. And so right. sometimes that distance between a veteran and a family member or veteran and civilian that, that there are these gaps and these distances. So that title encapsulates both of those images. Right. So John, you're, you're the parent of two lovely children, now grown up, and you and your wife have, how long were you in the uh, Air Force? Yeah, I served uh, 20 years on active duty, and um, you know, we moved nine times. Right. And uh, you know, I, I was away for about four years out of my 
20 years, you know, four, right. four years where I wasn't in my own bed at home right. and away. So I think what's particularly important about um, this festival is to really explain kind of the unique circumstances of, of um, life for um, a military spouse or a child of a military member. Um, you know, the, the, you talk all the time about it takes a special person to be able to serve our country, but I would say that it takes an even more exceptionally resilient person um, that is kind of, for us, you know, we can't serve if we don't have kind of the love and, uh, and support of our family members. Right. So I think a big part of what we're hoping to convey during this whole month of celebration of um, our military family members and veterans in our community is just you know, to, to say thank you mm -hmm. um, for, for those family members that um, also served you know, um, it's often said that uh, um, you recruit the soldier, but you retain the family. And I think that's particularly true, although the reality is military life can be very, very hard and arduous on the family members, right. you know, so. Yeah, and, and in many ways probably confusing for children, especially moving and stuff like that when they're young. Yeah. And going, Gee, I just made some friends, why do we have yeah. to leave? And, yeah, yeah so we very... we moved uh, one year. We moved right in the middle of the school year, mm. you know. And uh, right. daughter was approaching middle school. Son was, I think, uh, fourth grade, you know. And just had yeah. You know, just as they were starting to get really close with particular friends at right. the previous school, now yeah. dad yeah. gets <laughs> orders again. Yeah. And um, you know, um, so we uproot the whole family and move all the way across the country to a new location, new neighborhood, new school, getting acclimated all over again. And, you know, the adults were kind of used to it, but when you're talking about a, you know, an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old, you know, it's, it's really tough. It can be really tough. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and, and so the interesting thing about this production, as I know it, um, we are catching kind of the life of you and your family, which was a Vietnam veteran. But some of the voices that people will hear are people who served in Iraq and Afghanistan and even since then. And, you know, some of them, it's not the wife staying home, they both served or, or things like that. And so, and they're not as apparent as previous generations. I mean, I know the Vietnam veteran was pretty quiet when they first got home because they didn't want people to know because it just had this terrible little aura about the thing. Um, but in Korea and Vietnam, the veterans, everybody, you knew all your neighbors who served, you knew the families that were dealing with it. That's not known today. And so that's added to the isolation. Uh, I said it in city council meeting last night that you know, my biggest goals when I took this job, because um, Claire Higgins, who um, asked me to apply, and I ended up getting the thing, she wanted me to really work with the homeless veterans in the community, and that's been my priority for the 20 years I've done it. But my second biggest priority has the in, trying to integrate returning veterans back into the community, and it's it's you know it's it's not like with Vietnam where they came home and people were calling them names and mm -hmm. some people did get spat at. Not, you know, as many as you hear, but I mean, it was a difficult time. But they're coming home and people are going up, thank you for your service and walking away. The isolation's right. the same. And I think right. this art exhibit might actually bring some attention to that. Yeah, it's interesting as I'm still crafting it, you know, it opens in a couple of weeks, so I'm now working with all the pieces, oh, yeah. that it has, yeah, artwork by my dad, and it's and the work from my dad is really an outgrowth of his processing of all of his experiences of which he feels a lot of complicated feelings around and it has some writings by my mom which she's you know wrestled with the the um, dedication over so many years to stay present in this tumultuous journey 
um, that has also led to some beautiful things like this artwork. Right. But interspersed with that are um, these sound pieces built off of 12 hours of interviews with, as you're saying, like a broad swath of our community that have served. And so it creates, or the hope is that what, what, that what emerges is a complex picture that's not easy to be like, oh, I get it. That's right. what it means to be a veteran. Right. Oh, I get it. That, that to be with it, and if you really come and spend time at the exhibit and really listen, spend time to sit and listen to these pieces, it's going to, I think, what will emerge is a complex picture that makes us really have to open up our sense of understanding, our empathy, our, our oh, right. I don't really see the totality. Right. So. Right. When everybody says beyond saying thank you for your service, this is exactly what that is. It's because there, it, it is complex. I served in the Navy. I served during peacetime. But even the transition through training and then all the experiences I had and then to come home, it's, it's a really difficult transition. And if people don't, I don't want to say don't accept you, but don't really understand what you've been through. And it's impossible for them fully to understand, but just have the empathy or just have the ears, the listening of what it's like. Um, I guess that's why people should really go to this, this experience. It's going to be um, fabulous for that. Well, I think, oh, just let me add one thing. Oh, one yeah. thing that, I, that I'm finding eye-opening as I'm working particularly on the sound pieces in relationship to what my experience as the daughter of a Vietnam veteran has been is that and these are some of the things my dad has said as well, is that some of the powerful, beautiful um, connections among people that happens in the military or the relationship to order or the relationship to being able to get something done or the relationship to um, family beyond your blood family, like those, those are also the parts that's, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just like, oh, what happened over there? It's right. also like, oh, you have a relationship to an understanding of, of a commitment to another person that maybe I've never felt, you know, and that that can, so some of that I think also gets uh, illuminated in this. That's excellent. Yeah. So, so we have the exhibit that's going to happen right at APE. Um, complete with sound and experience and visual. But um, we have things to look at in other places. Um, tell folks about who we have um, displaying some of their artwork. Yes, yeah, so in the New England Visionary Artist Museum, also known as Anchor House for Artists, we will have an exhibit called Artful Bonds that is focusing on veterans and family members. So we'll have uh, about, I would say about 60% of the exhibit will be veterans and family members, their artwork together. Right. And so widening that lens of, of expression. And then at City Hall and Memorial Hall and Forbes Library, we're going to have work uh, that comes from the VA in Leeds and from Soldier On. And, you know, for me, it's very meaningful that the uh, VA in Leeds is part of this because my dad was really, uh, our lives changed when my dad went to Ward 8. Right. So, you know, I grew up before we knew what PTSD was. We didn't know what was happening with my dad. And then came the day that he read this book and was like, this, I think this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. And went to Ward 8. And so, um, and then to see that a lot of his healing has happened through, or, healing and meaning making of his experiences has happened through art. The fact that we have art that is coming out of the VA um, is really exciting that, yeah. that it's part of this project. Yeah, and, and, and it will be on the second floor of City Hall, both in the hallway, some work's going to be at the mayor's office, and other work is going to be in the hearing room. Um, we just have to very carefully take the pictures that are there <laughs> and make sure we store them properly. Um, Memorial Hall in the foyer and in my hallway. I'll also have some work in our office and then of course Forbes Library. So it is, it's, it's going to be another great part yeah. of the experience for the month of November. And but we have individual things yeah, too. Yeah, and one other thing, the, a lot of the work that's coming to uh, the 
New England Visionary Artist Museum is connected with Warriors Art Room. So that's, that's another that's great going. organization okay. um, that is part of this project and is doing such powerful work. And so, yeah. so that connection is, is wedded in that space. Yeah, the Warrior Art Room, for people who don't know it, is in um, the building Keystone next to building. Eatworks. Keystone Building. Right? Keystone Building. Yep. Here. Yeah, so there are new galleries there. It moved from Westfield into there. Beautiful place. The artwork is great. I was at a retreat um, a few years ago to help myself, and mm -hmm. one of the components of this weekend was Steve Jones comes and shows you how to do some paintings, just like the guy yeah. did on PBS. What was his name? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, and he's he would a do our Air Force. <laughs> What's that? He's a former Air Force non commissioned officer. A lot of people really? don't even know that. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I think he was even a drill instructor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just tell He's you. such a sweet man. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I remember drill instructors. But anyways, yeah, so, and he came, and I did a painting. I never did a painting. I'd drawn stick figures, you know. I was really impressed with myself with that. So it, uh, and it is, it makes you feel an accomplishment, and there is an emotion that even went in with that piece of work, and yeah. I'm no, no painter, so mm -hmm. um, that's really exciting. But we have some of the other stuff. So we have a couple of old friends of ours who are going to do some poetry, correct? Right, right, yeah. So um, on November 5th, mm -hmm. we'll have um, Doug Anderson and Preston Hood, who are acclaimed um, poets. Um, they've, they've, in their, their own right, you know, they've had published works and they've done poetry readings in the region. Um, both have some some um, indelible experience with the VA here in Leeds and they've talked um, very openly about how if it wasn't for a VA in Leeds you know it, their, their, their lives would have taken a different path right and um, and they've uh, written some e exceptionally profound um, poetry that where they've really have put, put, put themselves out and really laid out their whole soul and um, but as we were talking to Preston the other day, you know, and I think on, on Molly's point too, is that um, there's, there's a lot of create, creative expression that um, is just about where you are right now, you know, yeah. and, and being present in, the, in this moment and what your experience is during wartime and when you returned home and where you are now. And I think right. what people will see as they go into AP Gallery and the other venues is just that, you know, it's, it's not just um, war and all its combat, you know, and conflict, and, yep, and it'll be weapons it, and all that. Exactly, it's, it's and, and everything. And I think Preston and Doug want to make sure that um, they're they're providing a kind of a full milieu of their experiences. You know, being in Vietnam, coming home from Vietnam, and that whole journey that's taken place in their own lives and where they are now, and what that message can can bring to us as a community. You know. Right. A message of hope, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I find it interesting. For the 20 years I've been doing it, I'll be out somewhere and I'll learn that somebody's a veteran, and I would have thought, you know, I thought I could identify everybody who, who served, but you can't. You can't. I mean, they're they're every every walk of life goes into the military, and they all come out. They all come out changed because you can't help it, but. Then they come into the community, and if they blend and they can get in, great. You won't know that they're a veteran unless someday they mention it. Um, but they served, and but some, especially the newer ones, it's harder for them to transition than it used to be. So uh, hopefully, this will get the community to really kind of open their arms more for people who have served mm -hmm. uh, recently and way back when. So let's see, we covered the poetry. There's um, there's a play by right. Rhino Leap Productions. They're coming up the 4th of November. It's a one-person show that is called An Iliad. And it um, interestingly, it's the Friday before, so that weekend is An Iliad on Friday, on Saturday, and then the poetry reading on Sunday. And, uh, and that weekend of those two days, An Iliad is really um, in the embodiment of the poet you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the poet across millennia, the one who has to keep telling the story. 
Right. And so he's wrestling with, here he is again, having to tell the story of war because we keep doing it. Yeah. And so that's on Saturday, is that, Im that presence with the poet through this play, and then on Sunday, to be in the presence of two poets who have, you know, walked this journey mm -hmm. over decades. And then the following weekend, we have two weekends of readings of a piece that we're calling for Jude. And it is a new iteration of a play called Occupied Territories that was done from 2015 to 2018 and had an off-Broadway run in 2017. And tells, it's really based on my family's experience. My sister, my older sister, was born in, well, my dad served in Vietnam. Mm. And so the story is uh, the story of these two sisters, adult sisters, um, reckoning with their father's legacy and their legacy on the night of their father's funeral. Decades, you know, he, right. uh, you know, in the in the in the story, my father's still alive, but in right. this narrative story, the father dies in say his seventies or so. And uh, so what we've done in this new iteration, which I'm really excited to see how it works, it's yeah. all a, an experiment, is that we've, t in the original, it's you move back and forth between the sisters in present day and the father in 1967 Vietnam. And so the play takes you back and forth between present day and the jungle and present day and the jungle until the two worlds collide. Well, in this version, we've taken out all of the soldiers and it's just a, a piece of the two sisters. Mm. But what it will be doing is moving back and forth between the sisters in a theatrical reading experience and then the visual artwork of my dad's with a sound score of the jungle and, and right. battle. And so experimenting with what it is to witness these, the, the journey of these sisters and the work of, of the father. Mm -hmm. um, because these sisters are really based off of my dad's kids, right. you know. Right. So it will be an interesting uh, theatrical visual art experience. So, um, just so folks know, you did. We did have a reading up here, BC, before COVID. Was uh -huh. that was that <laughs> 20, eighteen or nineteen? Twenty eighteen. Eighteen. 18? 18 yeah. Yeah. That's how we yeah. got connected. I'm talking to somebody in North Carolina and finding out she grew up on Vernon Street. <laughs> but anyway, it's not to go back there. But um, so it will be interesting because we did see, we did witness that experience as that reading went on. Um, to, so now to just focus on the two sisters is going to yeah. be, it's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully I can get a seat. Yes. Um, One other thing I wanted to say in sure. the, uh, Another element to the installation that will be at APE, which is, is newer, just you know, a couple months joining this project, is the work of Danny Noyen. Right. And so this adds a whole other layer of complexity, which I am very moved by, what's going to unfold through that. So Danny Noyen is a, a, veteran, a veteran of the uh, you know, US Army in his own right, and is also a Vietnamese refugee. So he, at seven, um, f had to flee Saigon uh, in 1978, 79, and arrived through the sponsorship of my parents to Northampton in November of 1979. So he is building a piece of digital art that will tell the story of his journey from Saigon wow. and what it was to, to be on those boats and to face pirates and to mm -hmm. his father needing to leap into the water that was shark infested to try to swim to another boat to try to get some food for the baby for the you know four children under the age of seven including a, an infant and and that journey to then arrive in my parents basement and so that basement and my father are really potent image um, images for him from from childhood and so that, and then they've stayed connected over all of these years. And so the fact that all of this work is coming together is, is, is very moving. And the fact that when he looked back at the Gazette article uh -huh. that was in the paper in 1979, he said, it was November. Yes. We're doing this in November. <laughs> you know, the serendipity and yeah. the, the synchronicity yeah. of, of full circle yeah. and of healing. Yeah. yeah. And it was happening right here on Vernon Street in Northampton, <laughs> folks. Right. That is, that's wild. 
you know, you were talking about the, the first event, uh, an Iliad, and it's, it struck me because just a few days ago I was up at GCC and I was working with the nursing school. And they were doing a whole thing about mental health and homelessness. And so I was up there to answer any questions. The people came through at the health fair. And I was talking with one of the women, and um, she's in the reserves. And she just found out earlier that day that she's being called up, and she's probably going to Poland because of supporting what's going on with Ukraine. Now we have what's going on down in the Gaza, and it's like that, that never ending, and it affects people. Mm -hmm. And it affects, just like the stone so it's going to affect mm -hmm. her, her family, her friends, and her community. And here we go again. Let's and that's what sure feels well. also, uh, you know, one of, the th one of the issues I was wrestling with, with the play that in its full production, when the, the one that occupied territories, um, I was wrestling with the fact that we were missing in the play, the voice directly of the Vietnamese experience, and mm -hmm. of course there is no one Vietnamese experience, right? Uh, but the the fact that Danny is um, so generously entering into this project, it just like he was a child right. in the midst of that war, yeah. and just and that he's he's um, he's opening up a bit of imagery from his story of being a child the recipient of that, of that combat, and how many children right now are the recipients. Yeah. And so the right. fact that that <coughs> story is somehow threaded in here, right. that it's not just the children of our military, it's the children who are in the places right. of, in which these battles are, you know, right. these wars are unfolding. And yeah, the yeah. most famous picture out of Time magazine, that girl Running from the town, right? Napalm um, with attack. Napalm in the back. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I think that did more for people mm -hmm. than anything. I was only a kid, and I remember my parents buying that magazine. Right. Yeah. I think what you were mentioning the other day when we were talking about um, the planning for the project is with the Iliad, with a portion of that presentation where the poet is going to start from the beginning of time with mankind, humanity's entry into warfare and read through every single conflict. Yes. And it's gonna take a long time. Yes, it's a powerful <laughs> and, moment of and time. And we're continuing, we're gonna continue with that um, to this day. Uh, we just continue to repeat, history repeats itself. Um, and individuals and families are going to yeah. Be dealing with the consequences right. of it. And hence the, the stone's throw. Yeah. But I think it's going to also, I think it will project hope. I think this will be, I'm so excited about all of it. Um, so I want to go to one of these things. How do I do it? Yes, so easiest would be to go to the APE website, which is apearts, A-P-E-A-R-T-S dot okay. org. And you'll see a link on there that says right on the right on the um, homepage that can take you right there, and it has all the information. It has where you can get tickets. All the tickets to all of the performance events are free. You just it's helpful to register so that we know how. Uh, make sure we have enough seats. Um, that would be the easiest way is right. go to apearts.org. Okay. Um, there's also um, a reception, kind of not kicking it off. It's going to happen a week later. Uh, but Friday, November 10th, we are going to have little snippets of what's going to be out there, including a little bit of the artwork. We're going to have a reception at the Hotel Northampton. It's going to run from 5 to 7. At um, And so because the 10th, November 10th, which is my birthday along with the Marines, <laughs> um, is, is um, a day off for many people. And what I would hope is that people will go to the exhibit in the afternoon and then come and support the whole thing by coming to our gala. Um, and those that couldn't 
come there then, then they can leave and go to the show after uh, because it is Arts Night Out. Yes, yeah, so, so it's a Friday night open Arts Night eight. Out. Yeah. yeah. So it's open till 8. So um, I invite people. You can uh, learn about that by through my office. Uh, I've got to get it up on the website. And hopefully by the time this show airs, it'll be on our website. But there will be a link to buy tickets. It, the proceeds of it are going to go to two very worthy causes. One of them, Soldier On, uh, which runs both transitional housing and permanent housing for formerly homeless veterans right here in Northampton up in Leeds and in other locations. And also, um, I know a lot of my Northampton veterans know of the Building Bridges uh, Veterans Initiative, which they provide, excuse me, they provide meals, um, usually lunch, at different sites throughout Western Massachusetts. It started in Northampton down at the old World War II Club, and it is now, I think, uh, I can't even count how many places it happens. but. Every, every week there's a place right here in Western Mass you can go, you can find your fellow veterans and have lunch with them. So those two causes are going to get the proceeds of that evening. So, and if you have a struggle trying to find it, just call my office, 413-587-1299, and inquire about the, uh, the gala. There's more seats for that than there are for some of the performances, but please, everyone, go out and witness this event. Uh, it's going to be in Northampton. This is going on from the November 3rd to the 30th. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason not to go feel this experience and, and, and understand uh, the lives of the families that uh, serve as well as the veteran. Um, am I missing anything? Should I think we just say we really want people to understand that this is about community. It's right. about hope. It's about understanding. It's about empathy. Um, and for those of us who have served, when we return home, we're still looking for that meaning and purpose in our lives. Right. And we want to get involved. We want to stay active in our community. And the isolation part that you described, Steve, is, is real for oh, yeah. many veterans. And, and getting connected back into the community, being part of something bigger than yourselves, that's what we all yearn for. It's what we all have in common as, right. as human right. beings. And I think what people will see as they see this exhibit is a sense of community and that's what I hope people get yeah. um, at the end of the month as they go through the different venues. Yeah, uh, uh, right, because I think it is, it is hopeful, it is a, 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 an aspiring that it's great to serve, but we've got to support those that serve. Um, whether they serve yeah. on the city council or the school board yeah. or they serve in the military. That's right. We've got to honor that and respect it and lift it up. Exactly. And I think our show will do that. I really do. So our show, like I created it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, so thank you both very much um, for coming on to my show. Uh, this will be aired in Northampton and all the other locations in the towns that we have. And uh, please, everyone, come out and see the, the show. Um, and again, if you need anything when it comes to veteran services, applying for the VA Health, remember PACT Act is still out there. So um, if you've got any conditions, if you know a family member who has health issues due to their service, please reach out to our office. That's what we're there for. We're there to inform and then help you file and get the things that you need. All right. Thank you, everybody, and I will hopefully see you next month. Um, for another show of Central Hampshire Veterans Services. Thank you.